In a world of glitz and glam, flashing lights and screaming fans, most people are unaware of the war that rages behind the scenes. And that war includes your favorite artist and your favorite songs. This is The Dark Side of Songwriting. Hosted by Naeem Edwards. Side of song right and my name is Naeem Elvis. I'm your host and today it is amazing the mental gymnastics that people go through when justifying the actions of somebody that they actually like he did it for a million dollars who wouldn't take a million dollars you would be crazy if you wouldn't do a six a six nine song for a million dollars and this is supposed to be somebody who y'all said was a high-ranking street artist he don't fuck with no rats he don't fuck with people who don't have, you know, that shit in them. He supposed to be a stand-up nigga. Y'all said this stuff, but we didn't, we never thought that. He said he was about that. We didn't know what to think about that before he opened his mouth and spoke. And then you have the person that's obviously dead and empty inside on the other side who has to pay. The thing that Kodak Black and 6 9 have in common when it comes to being in this music industry is that both of them have been exchanging their music for favors. 6 9 exchanged his music for money and protection and favors from people who was in his surroundings that could protect him so he can get out here and be as crazy and as obnoxious as he want to until it comes crashing down. Kodak Black has been exchanging his music from day one for legal favor since he entered this industry. The first legal exchange for music for legal help was Bodak Yellow. I'm going to give away my most prominent street song, most popular song in my catalog, one of the hottest songs that I have from when I first started. And we know that your music, when you first come out, that's the music that people latch on to. And you know, that's like mother's milk to your core fan base. I'm going to give that to the record label in exchange for money and legal help. I'm going to give that over and yeah they gave me credit and they broke me a little bit of bread but cardi b is way richer than kodak black is and probably is going to be way richer than he ever will be because kodak black is in debt and when i say he's in debt i'm not talking about monetary wise you know debt in the music industry a lot of the times because we're in an industry that is based on favors debt is defined as you owe me a favor so if i am the president of Atlanta Records, you are already hot because I know you can deliver. I know you're good at what you do. I'm not going to let my cash cow sit in prison. However, my cash cow needs to continue to deliver in the way that I feel like he should deliver in order to pay me back for what has happened. There's been plenty of instances where music has been given away, songs have been given away behind the scenes and writing and stuff has been done but when you start talking when you start bet talking the hell going on when you start talking about people in their legal woes and people in their legal problems legal problems are next to probably medical problems when we talk about the severity of being expensive presidential pardons are not cheap presidential pardons are not free getting you out of jail is not free lying on applications and trying to cross into the border to get around and all this stuff, that stuff's not free to do. You're going to owe somebody something because every time, because why are you not locked up? Because regular citizens will be locked up for the stuff that you've done. Still in jail, probably fighting. You have the luxury of being able to get lawyers to get you out, people to call up there and your, your friend at the late, not your friend, but your boss at the label is friends with the judge in the county or they'll call and say we're going to make a contribution to your next campaign or we're going to donate to your, your your volleyball facility you know just all type of stuff that people will actually have to pick the phone up for people will have to pick up the phone and actually call down there and say hey like be lenient on them and you know maybe four months in prison six months or get them clean enough so he can come back out and deliver but it's never going to be free. You're never going to do anything. Nothing is, nobody's lucky and nothing is free. Not in this business. You cannot get lucky and there will be no free exchanges. So when you have a situation like 6 9 where 
the music industry right now is in a desperate type of crisis. We're in a very unique situation where the landscape is changing. People are moving away from the things that have been normalized for the past 15, 20 years. People are ready for a change and people are ready for things to be different. And what better way to do that, to take somebody who has 100% credibility on the ground with people to try to, because executives think that fans are stupid. That's just the truth. They think you're stupid. They think you're mindless zombies. They think that we will accept something. It's like the Kamala Harris situation. They think that we will accept her because she says she listened to Tupac in 1988 when Tupac wasn't even, you know, like, you know, she, they think that saying something that has some type of verisimilitude to the things that we like will make us pay attention to them and make us drop our guard. So you have 6 9 who is bleeding in the street and dying, and but so they go get a tourniquet, the tourniquet being Kodak Black, and they say, let's just see, or whatever, because we know how much those people over there value money. We know how much those people, because I don't think he got a million dollars. I'm going to be for real with you. I don't think he did it for even close to a million, maybe 100, maybe 250, being generous, maybe 250. Maybe a Kodak Black feature is worth 250. I don't know. But everybody's up there chattering because 10K, 6 9 signed to 10K Projects. 10K Projects is Universal Music Group, Elliot Grange, or whoever. Yeah, Luca Grange's son, Elliot, runs 10K Projects, so it's Universal Music. Atlantic Records and Universal Parent child whatever type of relationship you think that they're not up there planning to see how they can get six nine back into the mix to try to stir up trouble because see things aren't really going on right now nothing's really happening nothing's really exciting people are just kind of living their lives and we're going with the flow things is just kind of dead right now and things have been dead for most of this year things have been pretty dead as far as music go so they're up there chattering to see how they can get him in there Bring, bring. Hey, we need somebody to do a song with this motherfucker. We know how much them hip hop fans value money. Say you gave them a million. Oh, shit, bet. And then they might have gave them the million. But because we have prioritized money over reputation, money over integrity, money over law and morals and, and all these type of things, and we've made dogma so, you know, whatever, like, of course, most people are going to be like, oh shit, for a million dollars, I'll tarnish my reputation. What the fuck is a million dollars for your in exchange for your name? This nigga Kodak Black is paying his dues. He's paying back favors. There's no way he would have done that. I mean, but then it's like, can I really say that there's no way that this nigga could have not said, I don't give a fuck, there's a million dollars, or I don't give a fuck, he hard? Or whatever. Like, we, we don't really know where to go. But I do know that this motherfucker has been trading his music for favors for a very fucking long time. So, I don't expect it to stop no time soon. I'm not going to listen to the song. I don't care about the song. Cold, I don't think Kodak Black should have done that. But just for a reputation type of standpoint. But at the same time, my question would be now... Is Kodak Black's reputation bigger than anything that he could do in music? Because remember, like, he's the person who is, the, he's the super gremlin. I took the fake pill because I'm a gremlin. He said that. And nobody, niggas thought it was, niggas made that a number one song. Said it was super turn. He was super lit. So... It's just something to think about, just the fact that, yeah, he owe favors and he just paying, he's paying his dues. He's paying back his bosses. And that's just the way that you should look at this. It ain't nothing to really, whatever, who gives a fuck? This is the dark side of song.